Okay, we are going to start uh, topic nine as we start the second semester and topic nine is all about conic sections and this unit that we're going to start with isn't exactly in topic nine but it kind of fits nicely and there's some things that you need to know. Um, so this is, should be actually review for you. You had this um, in geometry. You may have even seen it a little bit in some of your algebra that you've worked with. But we are going to look at what the distance and midpoint formula um, for, for uses. Um, the distance formula, and they're just two different formulas. The distance formula is this formula right here. It's the distance between two points on a graph. Um, notice that when we have two points on a graph, they have x and y coordinates. And so our formula is made up of the two different coordinates. When we're looking for the distance, it's exactly what it says. We're looking for the length or the distance between two points on a graph. So it's this formula, distance equals the square root of, and notice that the square root is over all of it. So at the very end when we calculate, we're going to take the square root of it. Um, we take the difference in the y-coordinates squared plus the difference in the, I'm sorry, I think I said that backwards, the difference in the x-coordinates squared plus the difference in the y-coordinates squared. Okay, this is the formula that we're going to use anytime we're asked to find a length or a distance between two points. So an example one, it says, what is the distance between these two points? Um, I'm going to just take my first coordinate, and I'm going to label that x1, y1. And I'm going to take my second one, and I'm going to label that x2, y2. Now, you can actually turn that around if you want to. It doesn't have to be that way. You could make this x2 and y2. You could make this x1 and y1. That doesn't matter. But I just keep it. The first one I see becomes my x1, y1. The second point I see becomes my x2, y2. I'm just going to plug it into that formula. I'm going to say distance equals the square root of, and again, I'm taking the square root of all of it. We want to take x2 minus x1, so that would be 4 minus a negative 3. And I want to square that. Now, this is 2 is on the outside, so we're squaring that difference. Plus, then I'm going to take the difference in the y values. So I take y2 and I subtract y1. Negative 1 minus 5, and I'm going to square that. Now that you've substituted into the formula, it's just a matter of simplifying. So we're going to do the subtraction here. Distance is equal to the square root of. We're going to do our leave, change, change, and get 7 squared plus leave, change, change, we get negative 6 squared. When you square a value, it doesn't matter whether it's positive that you're squaring or whether you're squaring something that's negative. When you square something, you're always going to get a positive value. Okay, negative times a negative is still positive. So 7 squared is going to be 49 plus negative 6 squared. Negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36. These values, when you square them, will always be positive. I'm going to add those together. So I'm asking for the square root of 85. And then we're going to do that with our calculator. So you have a key, you have a square root key on your calculator. Um, we're going to round this probably to the nearest tenth. Okay, I know that the square root of 81 is 9, so this is going to be 9 point something. Let me go grab a calculator really quick. And I will type in 85, I hit my square root button, and I get 9.2. So the distance between those two points on a graph is approximately 9.2 units. Okay, let's try this again. If I want to find the distance between these two points on the graph, I'm going to say distance equals the square root of, again, I'm just going to make that x1 and that y1. I'm going to make that x2 and that y2. If I take the difference in my x values, I'm going to get negative 3 minus a negative 5. And I want to square that. Plus... Take the difference in my y values, so that would be a 2 minus 1, and I'm going to square that. Okay, when you subtract positive and negatives, you got to leave, change, change. Negative 3 plus 5, okay, that's going to be 2 squared plus 2 minus 1, 1 squared. 2 squared is 4. 1 squared is still 1, so this is just going to be the square root of 5. Okay, if it's asking you to find, to round your answer to the nearest tenth, then you'd punch in 5, 
hit your square root button, I get 2.2. 2.2. Okay, so just kind of see how they want you to leave your answer. And we could leave it as a square root of 5, um, or we typically find, I'm missing my decimal, it doesn't look like there's a decimal point in there, but it is 2.2. Okay, I'll let you give the third one a shot there. Okay, and that's finding the distance. We're also going to find the midpoint. Okay, so the midpoint means middle. Okay, so the midpoint formula is a point on a line segment, so you're going to be given a segment, and they're going to ask you to find the middle of it or the midpoint. It's the point on the line segment that is equal distance, equidistant, from the segment's endpoints. The midpoint is the point at which the x-coordinate is the average of the two x-values, and the y-coordinate is the average of the two y-coordinates. So when we average something, we add up the numbers and we divide by how many there are. There's always going to be two points, two coordinates, so we're adding the x's and dividing by two. We're adding the y's and dividing by 2. We're averaging the x's and the y's. So for this particular one, to find the midpoint, I'm going to take, again, this is x1 and y1. This is x2 and y2. I'm going to take the two x values, and I'm going to average them. So negative 5 plus negative 1, and I'm going to divide it by 2 because I'm averaging it. Okay, that's going to be a negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the y values. I'm going to average them. So that's 1 plus 6 divided by 2. That's equal to 7 over 2. Now you can leave your answer as 7 over 2, or you can say that's 3.5. You can turn it into a decimal, or you may leave the fraction. But what we want to do is we want to put our answer as an ordered pair. Notice up here in the formula, the answer is in parentheses. It's an ordered pair. You put the x value first, followed by the y value. That is the midpoint, or the middle, of the segment with those two endpoints. Okay, let me try one more. Okay, the second one here, this is my x1, y1. This is my x2, y2. So if I'm looking for the midpoint, I'm going to average the x values. So take your two x values, and you're going to add them together and divide by 2, because there's two of them. So this is going to be 2 over 2, which is 1. We're going to average our y values, so we get 3 plus a negative 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1 over 2. Okay, we can leave it as 1 half, or we can write it as a decimal. That's entirely up to you, but we do want you to write your answer as an ordered pair. Okay, so 1, x comes before y. Okay, and then lastly here it says a car starts at home and travels 10 miles north. And 12 miles east, how far is the car from home? So if you draw yourself a little map here, if you started here at home, let's say that's home. Okay, that's your home. And a car starts at home and it travels 10 miles north. Well, if you think about which north is up and south is down, okay, east is to the right, west is to the left. Okay, I'm going to draw that up here. Here's your home. So if you drive 10 miles north, that's 10 miles. And then you drive 12 miles east. Well, on a map, east is to the right. So I'm going to go 12 miles east. They want to know how far from home are you. Okay, well, we're not going up and over. We're just saying, what is the distance here where you are from home? So what is this distance right here? Okay, um, we could do a couple of different things. We could say that if this point is at home, if this is at 0, 0, where I start, then to get to this point over here, this point over here would be on the graph, it would be 12, 10. Okay? Remember on a graph from 0, 0, you move left or right first and then up or down, so that would be at 12, 10. So you could use your distance formula to find the distance between those two. Or if you're thinking, well, that looks like a triangle, I could use the Pythagorean theorem too, and that works too. But since this lesson, they're wanting you to use the distance formula, that's what I'm going to use. So I would say that the distance is equal to the square root of, okay, let's just call this x1, y1. Let's call this x2, y2. So we're going to take the difference in the x values. So this would be 12 minus 0 squared plus the difference in the y values would be 10 minus 0 squared. And we want to take the square root of that. Okay, I'm going to run out of room here. So... Um, let me just kind of erase this up here. 
Okay, so I'm going to say distance equals the square root of, this would be 12 squared plus 10 squared. Okay, 12 squared is 144 plus 10 squared is 100. I'd have to add those together to get the square root of 244. And I'd use my calculator. Say 244, I'd take the square root of it, I get 15.6. Okay, so I'm 15.6 miles from home. Go back to the context, this is miles, so you'd want to label your answer in miles. Okay, that's just a quick recap of the distance and the midpoint formulas. There is a worksheet um, attached to PowerSchool that you can complete and send it back to me when you're done.